The battle of the Americas continues here at ESL One Cologne, and the Counter-Strike fans are lighting up the stadium very, very literally. They are ready for some world-class Counter-Strike, and we move into our second map. Already we see SK get one step closer to defending their title as world champions. But now we delve into a map that Liquid have already shown us they have a proficiency for. It's Cobblestone, Duncan. It's Cobblestone where Liquid have a chance to take us into a third. Yeah, and this was actually the first thing we found out about this Team Liquid team is when they got this lineup together and they went to ECS, they played on Cobblestone against G2 and they won. And we immediately saw, okay, right, there's, there's one in the back. Okay, that's the one map. But at that land, they lost all the other maps they played. They only won on Cobblestone. So all we knew was Liquid, good Cobblestone team. But going forwards, you know, you play a boot camp, you have more time, maybe other maps emerge. It hasn't. This is the main map for Team Liquid. Okay? On this one, it feels like they can go against any team in the world and they've got the chance to win. And so perfect timing now that they're down 0-1 to be going against SK on the map where you feel so confident. The issue, the issue here going into this map, though, is that this isn't necessarily a bad map for SK by any means either. They've already shown that they can beat teams here by playing quite a bit on this map, actually. And as well, we see the individual performances staying consistent for SK throughout the entire tournament, whereas Team Liquid has remained very consistent in that last game. It just really wasn't there, for me at least, at all. So I'm needing them to go backstage right now and do a complete recentering. We need to see the performance we saw yesterday versus Fnatic if we want to have them have any chance of now tying this up a one-to-one. Yanko, -one. is there anything in particular you want to highlight when we talk about Liquid and their and their cobblestone, suggesting it's one of their best chances versus SK. Is there anything you know within the game that stood out when we saw it before? I think it's a good example of how, even though they are a mixed team of sorts in a sense that they have simple as, as, a, as, a, as a stand and right, that they do have some depth on this map. So they actually have some set strats that they go for. They have a pretty good uh, A split through a drop and mid. They also have. Uh, a good uh, B execute that can be used also as an A fake, where they throw the smokes that we've been seeing at this tournament, which fall around that uh, rock area closer to connectors, so that you know players rotating don't have the line of sight coming back into the bomb set. But I think that more than anything else, it just suits their players really well. They use Nitro and Leash to create space towards that B platform, then they just station a JDM there like a turret, and he can just take the long range duels with the AWP. Now, this is something that we've seen here. Obviously, SK had a chance to see it as well, so I'm interested to see, because they picked the CT side, what is their game plan uh, coming into this one. And yeah, one thing I think is very unique about them, but also plays to the guys from SK, is that all the commentators, I've heard them, they keep harping on that. This isn't a map usually on CT side, you want to do the double op setup. It can be very difficult to run, but obviously we know if Simple gets it rolling here, you, you, can, you can and probably will see the double op setup here. They work, make it work very well, but another team who also make it work well is obviously SK. They have that cold zero, they have the fallen combo, and so we have a great head-to-head -head in that sense. A bunch of duos on their best maps. I, I dislike it as well, mostly because it's hard, it's good initially, but if you have to retake a bomb site, it's much harder to do it uh, with an AWP. And obviously, the T's are already set up. You have a lot of sure, close exactly. corners to check, especially on A. So I I'd much rather see one upper, but being moved around between different sites. You, you describe their cobblestone as something with depth. And of course, a big part of that is the man behind them, the coach. Peacemaker, of course, Brazilian by nature, is standing behind the North Americans. And Mitch had a couple of words with the coaches in between these two maps. I did indeed, Alex. First off, did speak to Peacemaker as well. He mentioned it's a little bit frustrating to see many of those clutch rounds go against Liquid in favor of SK. Feels they would have been able to pull up a few more rounds, and he was generally happy with their pistol setups, but obviously crushing blow to lose both of them in that map. On the other side to Zeus, he thinks that you know, winning both pistols is more bad for Liquid than good for SK. He feels like their CT hole was very, very strong, and of course, he pointed directly to Cold Zero and said, this is our man of the moment. Of course, the entirety of SK putting in effort, but they definitely are hoping to close it out 2-0. No doubt about that. Thanks very much, Mitch. A little taste of what's going on in that SK huddle. Yanko, he's mentioned pistol rounds, and we've talked about them to death, it does seem, on this desk, but we do need to address this point. Pistol round losses are making life difficult for Liquid. And is, am I right in saying that pistol rounds can, should, and you know, statistically should be a bit of a coin flip, a bit of a, a random element almost? Yeah, I agree to an extent, because in pistol rounds, there's not a lot of grenades in play, right? It mostly comes down to aim jewels. The limited grenades you use are mostly to put yourself in favorable positions, but most of the time it comes down to the CT players, actually, because they're the ones who are just probably holding a, a long range angle. And if you see the player getting two headshots with four bullets, well, that probably spells the end of the round for the T's. But if not, then they get into those close range battles. It becomes more chaotic. So in that sense, pistol round more than the other rounds comes down to hitting your shots. Step also, one for Liquid uh, is sorry. winning pistols. 
We are going to start predictions nice and quick, Blue. You started believing in the North Americans. It didn't work out on train. Do you want to see a third map? I do, and I'm going to stick with Liquid for now. And Yanko. I wanted to say that Liquid would take Cobble before I saw train, but after seeing the fashion in which SK came into this grand final, I think that they're just going to close it here 2-0. Same kind of sentiment from you, Duncan. The form, a little yeah. too intimidating. I'm hoping that it's at least a really good game, a really classic game. Like, I want Team Liquid, even if they lose this, go out on your shield. Have a really, really good performance. Simple, just go crazy. Don't think about the fact that you're under pressure. They're, they're one map up. Just give it your best shot. But I do feel like SK Gaming, they know we're up one map and we can win this one as the one. Close this, dude. Don't go to nuke. So I think that it's going to be a, a slight gap, but SK is going to be the one who's going to be ahead. Battle of the Americas is about to continue. It will go down on Cobblestone. Can Liquid take us into a third? Or will SK get their second consecutive major championship? Your casters for this one. It's a room on fire, and indeed, this stadium will be on fire in just a moment. Thank you very much, Alex. We've got SK, we've got Liquid. Second map coming up. I hope you're ready for it. The desk, it seemed to mainly favor, um, you know, SK, and you can't really blame them, can you? When Taco's hitting shots like that, and it's, okay, Cold had his moments, but when Taco's the one who's beasting you, like when you've got some problems right now, it's definitely looking good for SK. I think a lot of it came down to a lack of comfort on train. Uh, they mentioned that on the desk as well. Not a great train, uh, train team quite yet as Team Liquid. Their map pool has expanded quickly, but that one's not there. And those, those two rounds from Cold, they talk about Cold being the man. Those two triple kill rounds he had over towards Ivy. One flashbang, one nade, one Molotov changes that. And that's just the lack of comfort on that map coming into play here on Cobble. They're going to be well versed. They're going to be way more prepared. They can handle any situation that's thrown at them here on this map. We're going to get live now. Pistol round coming up with Liquid starting on the terrorist side and SK on the CT side. They've got a lot of armor. In fact, only two players without it. And then Molotov there on JDM. That is interesting. Fur already spotting a bunch of people in mid lane. Look at it, Liquid. They're not going to slow down. The Glock train is coming to that A bomb side. Fur missing a couple of shots and he should be overrun. Trying to reload. Knife is out. He actually gets a stab in, but Pico and Simple. And also Nitro helping out, getting a couple of kills in return. And now it's Taco and Cold. And Cold is coming in from behind, but this is going to be a near impossible retake. The no fear YOLO approach has worked. Team Liquid, that is how you do it. You show that you're not afraid to take the fight, but Cold Zero gonna go ahead and snuff Nitro real quick. So it's only a man advantage now for Liquid going into this hold. Taco still with some time to work with, and now he's got the info as well. Spots the man on the site, but Simple will end his worries. It's all on Cold now in a 1v3, and the Triangle of Doom has been set up. As soon as he walks out, he's gonna be walking into a crossfire, and Liquid are playing this perfectly. Nobody peeking him, nobody giving him anything to work with here. He's just hoping that Liquid are going to get impatient. Somebody's gonna to have to make a play, and he will pick up the kill on Simple. But JDM and Hiko now, they know exactly where he's coming from. Gets one more, but obviously time has run out here. Still um, three good kills coming in from Cole. I mean, he knows that round is lost unless Liquid starts to make a big mistake, so might as well just get the most out of it. Saves the armor, and um, as you can tell, has a lot more money to buy within this round. The unfortunate part uh, is that uh, you know he gets he takes he takes our damage to the armor, so he can't just upgrade with to head armor for for three hundred dollars three hundred fifty dollars. So that would be huge if you were able to do that. But I mean that opening from Liquid that that's sending a message. That's not anything tactical. That's just saying yeah we lost map one. We're not scared. We're gonna come into this. This is our map pick. We're supremely confident on it. And they're just telling SK that they're willing to bring the fight to him moving forward. That's the important message exactly. Loud and clear. SK now no that they're going to have their work cut out for them. They still have to win this map if they want that title. Elise straight down into drop, and they are once again looking to get into connector. Look at this, how quickly Elise is just moving through the map, and now they can set up for the crunch onto the A-site liquid. So long as Elise controls this space, it's going to look so good for the offense. Liquid, they can just bide their time and give Elise time to work, and there you go, free kill on fire. There's only one left, and that's Fallen, and he's not there for long. Yeah, Cole managed to take out Elise eventually, but uh, he's gonna walk right into that headshot. From Pico with the AK in the middle. Taco hiding quite far away. I think he's still a little bit sort of wondering if they were going to try and double fake it, but it will be an A play. And FNX and Taco, I mean, again, do you play for exit frags or do you try and save the whatever you have? It's 2200 equipment value, not really that much on them. No, and uh, you, you try and get a couple kills, you try and get some of these AKs away, see if you, you can just get anything. Uh, I mean, it looks like they're just going to be content to say if Liquid's going to retreat this way, they'll, they'll be more than happy to take the kills, but they're going to bring these into the next round. So no, no big loss for SK, and no big, no, no, actually no real big gain either. No, this is nothing too crazy here for SK. We already have Cold prioritizing the AWP as well. His money is looking fairly good. Don't really expect him to be, be making that big investment in the next round. 
They finally win a pistol round liquid, though. That's a change. Yeah, that's a good start, and that, that's going to help out because I think before this pistol round, they had lost six in a row in their, in their previous three match, three maps. Uh, so that, that's actually massive for them. That's going to help out huge uh, moving forward. I think the big thing is, is Elyge, not only on the pistol round, but even in the second round, just rushing down drop. He's just throwing caution to the wind. He's playing his role. He's not being scared to get up there. He has confidence that those kills are going to be traded. That pistol round, jumping over the ledge, staying aggressive. Even though he gets killed, JDM's there for the trade. And those are the kind of basics. Those are the, the confidence building kind of plays that's going to happen here that's going to make a lesion to that monster that we've seen in the past in this tournament. He is definitely erect in phase. And so we'll have to see if he can do it again here on the second map. 2 0 lead for Team Liquid going into this hard eco for SK Gaming. It's only FNX who really has any kind of firepower along with Taco. Fire has invested in a CZ75, but both Fallen and Cold, those, the double op duo that was mentioned on the desk earlier, they're saving their money as much as possible here. Elige again very aggressive down and drop just setting the pace and setting the tempo early on somehow that's a USPS that Cold managed to take him out with shows you how dangerous he is yeah, and this is actually the very same tactic that was just ran by Team Liquid in the last round so SK they've actually rotated a third member there's a really nice crossfire setup Simple doesn't have a Molotov to force anyone out he's actually got the bomb and an AK and he's all alone here if SK was to pounce or for somehow somehow get just a lucky kill on him that would be very dangerous I was about to say, that is a little bit of a scary scenario, but he is going to back off, and it looks like JDM and Nitro as well rotating over towards that A site, and obviously they were close enough to hear that. The guy's holding an underpass for SK, so they're going to start rotating over towards the B site. Everybody here for SK soon, and Liquid, they aren't even out onto the site yet. 50 seconds left, and Simple leads the way. Very subtle, Taco. Instant headshot on Simple, and that drops the bomb. SK Gaming, they have confirmation that Liquid are coming to this bomb site. Good Molotov there, but they need to do more than that. Taco will be going down, so it's a three on three. And Liquid should be winning this round. They got 35 seconds still left. Smoke goes up to try and sold out the bomb side a little bit there. JDM almost in a lot of trouble. In fact, he runs out of bullets. He's gonna end up going down now. It's a two on two and 25 seconds. Can they get that bomb plant down? No, it's gonna be denied. It's all on Hiko now. One versus two. He tagged up already down to half HP. The Deagle sound, he's almost out of bullets. And oh no, SK, they're gonna win the round. Cold Sierra with a triple kill. Cold Zera gets all the kills, but Fallen playing at that statue is perfect in his movement. He's staying alive. He's keeping the attention on him. He's baiting Liquid into his teammate who's hiding in the chicken hut. He's baiting them for Cold Zera to come and make his play. And Fallen, I mean, that is, that is perfect mobility, perfect way to set your teammates up. And there's a crushing round for Team Liquid. They're gonna be able to buy into this. They have the op on JDM. They have a good amount of utility in all AKs, but they lose a round early on in a situation they shouldn't have. There was no armor. There was no real investment for SK aside from the weapons they saved previously. Yeah, that's a catastrophic round as far as Liquid are concerned. You should be mowing through that. You should get three rounds, and then you should be worrying about SK Gaming in this round. Now, SK, they even managed to save some uh, couple of guns going into this one. You can see the two AKs on Taco and Cold. So things are looking bright. And Liquid, they realize, right, all right, we're not actually gonna head back towards that B side. We've been successful on A so far, so we're gonna go ahead and get control of the hallways over here, start to set things up. If we wanna come back towards the pointy letter, we'll have that option later on. They've got to be careful, though, because that, that was amazing reads by SK. They, they read Team Liquid perfectly in that last round because it was the same tactic they'd used in the second round, and then they heard the footsteps. They've got to do a better job of masking where they're going as terrorists. And that is the big point, and that shows you just how crucial the information is. The audio information, if you hear those footsteps, SK Gaming are able to make a read off of that, and then that sets it up for the teamwork. The crossfire holds on that B site, and will the blender for Liquid. They just walked right into it, and now it's straight into drop with the bomb, and FNX in position. Taz doing them proud. There's another spray, and FNX all three, and that's the bomb dropped as well. An effortless round coming out of SK here. No one going down, just JDM, the last man left, and I don't know what you do at this point in time. They're actually out hunting for him. He's gonna miss the kill as well. And we'll be down to four health, and he's running right into Taco, so JDM not gonna be able to save this sniper rifle. That ties up the scoreline at 2-2. They finally win a pistol round, but now things seem to have truly broken down. You had to have known, I mean, they had to have known it wasn't gonna be that easy. It wasn't just gonna be win the pistol round, and then it's, then it's all gonna be fine moving forward. This is now, it's a little bit scary though, because this is... Are you it's saying not that fairy tales aren't true? <laughs> What's going on here, man? Is well, Santa true too? No? I mean, this is what's scary. The strength of Team Liquid, we've talked about it. This Liege Nitro combo early on, they're so good at entering, they're so good at getting these kills, trading kills. Well, you look back to Cold and the triples he had on train. Now you have FNX in one spot, doesn't even move. One clip gets three players. I mean, these, the strength of Team Liquid has been neutralized a couple times now by SK, so they're going to have to do a better job of this. 
Probably not going to be in this round, though. They don't have any armor and um, just some pistols. Leg shot, follow up with a grenade. Does a little bit of damage, but I mean, just safe play from Fallen, making sure no one can hunt him down. And it should be an easy cleanup from here on out. Yeah, that is a pretty FNX with that AK. Long distance spray. Gonna drop a Legion JDM low. Hiko taking some damage as well. And well, the defense has been bolstered. Both Fur and Fallen are here. FNX as well. And Cold getting ready to rotate. So it's gonna get nasty here for Liquid. This is the brilliance of the, of the defense that SK sets up. You can see where Fallen makes contact, where he gets that leg shot. He falls away. And since it's so advanced, he finds time for his teammates to rotate. Now that's exactly it. It's multiple layers of defense. And well, that was a brilliant round coming in from SK. No chance at all for Liquid to close the distance, to get up close for those one-shot headshots with the Tech Nines. That run and gun kind of pistol style that you're really hoping to make happen when you're the one who's obviously going. Doesn't happen for Liquid that time around. SK Gaming just too good on that defense. And so now three to two, SK Gaming in the lead, and we get another buy round coming in. But this is the problem now, JDM. Not enough money for the AWP. And that's actually, he's been taking some criticism recently throughout this tournament. I mean, just the fact that he is just that core offer. All he wants to do is get the sniper rifle. When he gets a rifle, you actually see a little bit of a drop in his level. Liquid setting up fairly early outside of the B-bomb site. There are some smokes and molotovs there to try and keep them back, but it looks like they want to try and see if they can keep the pace up here. And with FNX boosted up behind him, that could be extremely dangerous. Now they're going to push him, but they're not realizing that he's right there. Nitro, JDM, Pika, one kill each. That's a really good start. Taco still in the bomb side, and the bomb well, smoke goes down. He picks up one more kill, almost transfers the spray. And now FNX coming in from behind. He gets the one, but that's all he gets. Could have been way more. Fallen now, one versus two with the AWP for the retake. And he knows they're low. He's got the rifle now as well. And this is perfect with the M4. Elige on 14 HP, JDM on 29. There's the flash, and JDM actually flashes himself, so no need to help Fallen here, JDM. Let him do the work, and Fallen just moves closer and closer. Instant shot onto Elise, drops him, and now it's on all JDM, and Fallen seems to have an idea of where he's playing from. Going to spot him out in the open, and it's an easy clutch. He makes it look easy. Fallen, both kills, and the fourth round on the board for SK. And that's something that was brought up as well. A lot of clutch rounds going SK Gaming's way on train, and it seems like it's not going to change anytime soon, soon here on Cobble. Tough part of having that low HP when you're when you're a lead, you're just trying to gain information. You're just trying to peek and see where he's at, but because it just takes one bullet, Fallen picks that off, and then, you know, you mentioned the weakness of JDM's rifle, he baits him into committing to that fight where he's got all the cover in the world, perfectly played by Fallen. Now, the one thing they did accomplish that round is at least prove to themselves that that kind of a fast B attack can actually work. They did actually manage to sort of overcome the defense. They just weren't in a very good position, and because FNX was boosted up that quick, they lost an additional guy that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. So I would say that's pretty good uh, intel to gather pretty early on here, but still four, four on two. I mean, you could also tell that SK knew was coming. They had that fast flank, and here comes another fast B hit. Yeah, that AK just running on, and again, Cold Zero gets caught out. It's Taco holding on the site itself, and he's going to be able to pick up one kill. Still plenty of HP to work with as well. Looking for the second, and they're just there getting bogged down. Liquid, they need to get onto the site. Eco coming in with two big kills. Elise as well helping out. Now it's all on Fallen. Last time it was one on two. This time it's one on three. And he has the AWP. He's going to go for it anyway. It seems like madness, and he will go down for it as well. JDM picking up the final kill there with just four health left. A big round for Liquid. They needed that, and they need many more because money has grown on the SK side. They have a lot of economy behind this. It is going to get dwindled a bit because they have to drop a weapon over, over to FNX, but still, falling with 5,300 after that drop. So another round that Liquid has to survive, and yeah, that B hit is starting to... That's two rounds now where at least the initial attack has been successful to get the bomb planted, to give them an advantage in terms of player count. It looks to me like Cold is done getting run over. Now that AWP comes out, and we see the double up, one of the core gameplay coming, uh, well, one of the core strategies on the CT sign for SK Gaming coming out. They have tapped into their bank quite a bit to make it happen. A cold, now he falls back to Chicken Coop, and it's very difficult to root him out of there. Yeah, and the analysts were talking about this before the game went live, about the potential for the double orb and how it might affect you in a retake scenario. So Yanko was saying actually probably would prefer just the one AWP, so we'll see if that is going to be a, a factor here for SK. Both of these guys are so good at using it, though, that it could do the damage. You can see Liquid using JDM with his op, trying to find an early pick. And this is FNX is just like, I had success here in the past. I just had a triple spray down. Why not go right back to it, see if they're going to run into it again? But usually, I mean, this is where we saw the other day Team Liquid drop JDM down, and he tries to entry into that B bomb site from the drop zone. Look at the passive way that they've elected to hold here, SK Gaming. 
Taco not committed to it. Fur just holding passively at connector. F and X and Taco with the overlapping fields of fire. And then Cole to anchor on the site itself. This could get nasty here for Liquid. They've got 40 seconds left to make this play happen. Plenty of nades left, but they've taken some damage already. And it's waiting. It's just the waiting game now. Simple is just he's waiting for the go signal as Nitro and Higo get ready to drop. Cold Syrah in the back line is going to be lethal. They have no grenades, only one Molotov there on Nitro to maybe root him out. They're going to charge out of drop as well. FNX playing close. There's the kill coming in. And JDM will take down FNX, but do they realize that Cold Syrah is back here? They finally do. And Nitro pick up the kill. Taco very nearly connects through the smoke. That would have been a beautiful kill, but it doesn't quite happen. Ten seconds now, and they are finally going to try for that bomb plant here. Still a three on three, and they're just waiting for them. Liquid, they're trapped behind the statue. They need to fight their way out. Hiko picking up a headshot now. It's a two on three. Fur and Fallen are left, and somehow Liquid actually have got a good position. They're finally able to fight back as Fur takes down Hiko. It's all on Fur. He's alone. One versus two, and he's out in the open. And JDM to get the kill. Double for him, double for Nitro. And Liquid pick up consecutive rounds. That kill on the Cold Zero was key. Nicely done from Nitro, using that wall of smokes they set up to be aggressive, to root that position out. He knows he's not safe from one side, but he knows it's the best chance they have to finally get him out of that position. And this is now, I mean, even this time, SK read that. They had essentially four players in that site. Fallen as the fifth was rotating over very early. They knew it was coming. That execute took so long to come into play, and they still win it. Now we have to see if SK Gaming are going to show us some grit here, some determination, because they're the ones on pistols, and we've seen them win an eco so far. A repeat performance would be horrible for Liquid. So Liquid, it's all about keeping their calm now and getting that buddy system into effect. They are moving around in pairs, not really leaving. Much room to work oh, with, but what? unless... I, what can you do? Fallen, it's like a race car. It comes right around the corner, and another headshot! Fallen doing so much work! I mean, when you have a, when you have a guy that's out scouting your, your main opera, and JDM is no slouch, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them, and he's still just getting destroyed in this round, so... Again, SK about to have another miracle round over Team Liquid. Good shot from Simple, but Nitro also go down, and that was Fur hiding in the corner, and they didn't check it, so that's a big problem. Liege spraying wildly with a Mac 10. He's also alone in a one on three with about a minute left to try and see if he could somehow save his team. This certainly would be one of the most epic clutches if it happens. He's going for it, but FNX jumping and scouting. They save both the AWPs, and SK, what can you say? I mean, at, at this point, you feel like they're almost destined to win the second title. It's a, it's a tragedy that Liquid loses that round when they have all the advantages, but it's a disaster that they give over two ops for free. That is such an expensive setup. Normally, you want the you want the CT team, if they're going to run that, they have to invest in it, but now they have two ops for free. Look how much money Fallen and Cold have just after one win. Now that's it, Cold, he's actually got the other op waiting in the bank. If something goes wrong, no problem. We can go right back to it, gents. It's all good. Care of JDM and Team Liquid, thank you very much. I mean... It's, it's, it's huge that two anti-eco well, losses for Liquid, they just can't seem to handle it. Fallen's gonna find a leash lurking towards underpass. And so again, things continue to just develop here for SK Gaming. Simple tries to push out on a plateau. He's gonna get shut down. Taco just doing big damage. And now it's all on Nitro. And well, he will find a little bit of a lurk kill there on FNX. But he's got a long way to go here in a 1v4. Don't even know what it does to a team's confidence when you end up losing rounds like that. It's got to be so painful. Just knowing that you've managed to succeed, you've got those great B attacks in, and then it just falls apart. And even if you go back to train, they, they lost a couple on that map as well, and that's when you start in the future heading into those rounds. You know it's an anti-eco, you know they're looking at pistols, maybe a scout, and that's where in your head you just get this, this feeling of impending doom, and it makes you play a little bit more passive, a little bit less confidently, and that's when those pistols, that's when the scout from Fallen really punishes you. That's when we've seen teams shine in the past, teams that win when they have the Tech Nines, that win when they have the CZs, because there is no pressure. They feel like, right, this is a throwaway round. Get in there and do some damage, boys. And they end up overrunning the defense. And we'll see if that happens here, because Fur, he's just going to get plowed. Nitro just runs right over him, and he's leading the charge for Liquid. Quick adjustment here from Fallen, trying to get those anti-eco, well, basically, the anti-flash is out in time. And he's not going to hit the shot. Point blank. Never mind. Second try does it. And they can't follow up quick enough. The West of Liquid, they're too far behind, and Fallen gets one more kill, and the FNX still in the back line with the rifle. He goes down to Simple. I don't think he even knew where he was being shot from then. And now it's a 2-1-2, two -on -two and make that a 1-on-2. JDM entirely alone here, trying to see if he can hold on to it. Taco and Cold Zero still alive on the other side, and Liquid haven't won many of these clutch rounds, but this time they're going to have to. Otherwise, SK are going to be back into it, and of course, Cold Sierra picking up the kill. He's at 11 overall. 
and it's a three round lead for SK. Fallen is such a god when he's in those situations. He uses the, the movement that he has. It's so difficult to, to be able to get a good read on him, to be able to get a kill. Nitro had every advantage, still not able to do it. The second player even had more advantage and not able to do it. So Fallen, many times throughout this match, has just beat Team Liquid simply by his, his fundamental movement of the game. Yeah, he is. He has also that ability to just come through in key rounds for SK Gaming. The situations that you would think any other player who would cave, Fallen shines, and he gets two kills that make all the difference yet again for SK. Seven to four, SK in the lead, and Liquid once again on the pistols. This time they aren't wasting any time. It's going to be going straight out onto B here for Liquid. They are trying to change it up. They're going into drop. And that's right into FNX. He's waiting arms. He's going for the spray and he'll get traded. Simple doing work and Hiko as well. Could have obviously played at the window. It is going to be a four on three right now. Called Sira in the back line here. Just a chicken coop for him. Are they boosting back out again? It seems like they are. So they're actually boosted everyone back out except for Hiko. Of course, someone has to be left behind with the bomb. They have a timing window with Fur is still covering here. And if they can just find that, it's going to be perfect. In fact, I really wish Hiko wouldn't do anything at all until they have confirmation about what's happening on A. Oh, but that's a grenade. Ouch. Yeah, well, what did Guardian call him? The magic apple? <laughs> that was painful. <laughs> yeah, well, now Hiko, that's, that's the question. Does he become an aggressive lurk where he tries to create a distraction over towards the B bomb set? I think maybe he wanted to, but that nade has got to force him into a more passive role. So his job is going to be to cut off rotations, and one's already snuck by him. And that's the main issue here. Cold Zera might be able to get in to connect her, but Cold Zera doesn't actually want to back off of this either until Fallen has cleared out Plateau. And Fallen, he's getting a lot of information to work with. In the meantime, Fur and Underpass, he yeah. could be key because he could quickly rotate in and just get the backstab. That hamstring on Simple JDM and Nitro as they charge onto the site. And Cold, does he realize it? Seems like it now. There's confirmation and a whopping shot from Cold. What a kill coming through on Simple. He's looking for more. He's going to get it as well. All on Nitro, the bomb is down at least, but I don't think he has any hope of surviving here. I don't know how you could possibly stop this from happening. He's gonna pick up the first kill. It's a good start, but still another two left. The bomb is planted, not quite for him, so if they're defusing, he's gonna have a really hard time stopping. He charges in, Nitro spraying and connects, gets the headshot, but he can't stop Cold from defusing. And again, just the position of the bomb plant really working against him there. And it's a really nice try for Liquid. It was, it was a very nice try, but SK just so much utility as well. Their movement, I mean, Fallen pushing up kind of sort of neutralizes Hiko, and even more so when, when Fallen gets that kill, but you can see the positions they take. They're, they're saying, okay, we'll, we'll let you get into that site. We're not gonna try and stop this plant. We're, we have to be, we're, we're way too spread out. So they get in positions where they're not committed to take a fight, but they can all work together once the bomb gets planted, once they know where the majority of Team Liquid players are. That's some confidence right there and your ability to retake, your, in your teamwork especially. So, I mean, that is why SK Gaming, they are the best in the world. They're looking so solid right now. Liquid, the underdogs, definitely battling, but they've got a long way to go. And right, we still have Liquid, again, spreading out. And they are actually waiting for some aggression, in fact, over towards a long SK Gaming. I mean, they aren't going to be pushing, but Liquid really are. They feel like something's coming. The bomb is still quite far away. JDM and Liege covering that, so I'm wondering if they are going to try and fake it out. They got a lot of smokes going down and B. In fact, all of the traditional B smokes are down. But look at that, no one from SK is moving. They're, they're holding on right now at the A side of the map. And it looks like Team Liquid will try and recommit here. Elige goes down and now Fallen sees there's no one following up. They're not seeing any more action. So this fake that actually does end up in B anyway, it hasn't worked at all. Taco's still on the site. The smoke is about to evaporate and Nitro goes down. Cold, Fallen again. Taco helping out and now Kiko, the last man left. They do get a bit of a uh, secondary kill in there with the Molotov, but it doesn't matter. SK, they're, they're cold as ice. Try to do something a little bit tricky with a, with a lead who's gonna be alert, it looked like, to try and kind of sandwich things or, or get a kill from behind, but Fallout shuts that down, and you're right. The execution comes out, but since they don't see any presence, no one moves on the map. No one made any kind of a distraction aside from the smokes, aside from the flashes of that B bomb site. So Fallen has no reason. He trusts his teammates over at the B site. He doesn't need to look away from mid, and that's what punishes a liege. Oh, that's exactly it. He's so consistent as well in actually picking up that shot. It's several times now that he's just been finding these kills on underpass, finding kills on lurkers, and Team Liquid, well, they have to dig deep. They have to find a solution because it's almost over. 14th round, 9-4, to four, SK Gaming with a terrific lead here at the end of the first half. And, well, Liquid, they're still grasping. 
very sell. I mean, this is just the straight default kind of setup now coming out here from Liquid again, right? They're just waiting to see SK Gaming. Are you going to get aggressive? Are you kind of try and push on us to try and take the fight to us? SK Gaming, there's no reason for them to do so, however. They've just had so much success locking down the sites and waiting for Liquid to come to them. And so eventually Liquid are going to have to get over their fear and just go for the run. I mean, the fast and aggressive rounds have been, I think, the most successful for them here at the B-bomb sign, but it's risky keep running that, but they're gonna try anyway. It seems smokes are gonna go down actually really far back with the smokes. They're in drop, and they have sort of committed to this site now. Elige is gonna be moving up. Simple's there on the edge. They only have 50 seconds left, so they need to make a move, but look at SK. They have this situation read so well. Even Fur now rotating in cold. He does miss a shot, so he's gonna get another chance here. They're wall banging him down a little bit, but there's the reply. Elige gonna be going down. FNX picking up Nitro as well. It's now a three on three with 40 seconds on the clock as JDM picks up two big kills. A third one coming in, and now it's all on Fur somehow. The American Sniper saves them, and that's an ace in one round! JDM destroying SK. And they needed it, because the Riflers for Team Liquid have been punished on this hit so frequently. None of them wanted to be the aggressor. None of them wanted to make the play happen, and JDM, he's the one to do it. Once they eliminate Cold, he has every angle he could possibly want. This is nuts, though. That's how quiet Liquid have been. That ace puts him up to 11 kills. He's the first team to breach the double-digit limit for Liquid right now, and it took an ace to do it, and it's into the 15th round we go, and we'll see if we can get a repeat performance, because SK Gaming, they're digging, they, they actually don't have a whole lot of money to work with here. Fallen just had enough to squeak out an op, but we have two shotguns, a CZ on cold, and a single rifle picked up on Taco. At this point, you can't really rule SK out, no matter what kind of equipment they have. It, it doesn't seem to matter anymore. Whenever they decide, they aren't just gonna hit some crazy shots. And outside of the scout buy from Fallen, I don't think that Liquid has seen someone on our platform like this. And look at Fur, he does get punished. Nitro, it's a very swift headshot. That was key. And that forces Cold and Taco to actually rotate over here. He's seeing so many players. Fur is definitely uh, called out to his teammates. Wait a second. We haven't seen the bomb, but there's a lot of action over here. And that's forcing the SK defense to spread out. Until they see that bomb, they need to try and cover all the entries. I like that Taco's going aggressive, though. He's really trying to find that information quick. And Cold starting to feed off of this. He's actually looking to get over towards that B site, and that would be the perfect call to make in this situation. If he can get up close to that CZ, Liquid, they're about to hit drop. This is some beautiful Counter-Strike we're watching. The movement from Taco right now is destroying Liquid, even if he hasn't killed anyone yet. Look at the rotation. They're sandwiching them in right now. Fallen gets a shot, but Simple with a nice run through the smoke, but they, they need to get close to the shotgun. Taco picks up a kill. He's still alive. He gets one more Cold Zero to close out the round and the half. It's going to be 10-5 favoring SK. They lose the entry and then they simply make up for it by beautiful movement. That B bomb site is the only place Liquid was having success for most of the half. That was fast, aggressive B hits, but they started slowing down. They started being a little bit more scared. They could see SK was positioning themselves perfectly. Well, that's just a brutal thing to witness. And Cold Zero once again leading the charge along with Taco. Uh, we're gonna see how things pan out here in the second half after this short break. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
They say assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups, but it feels like at this point that you have to assume that SK are headed for a second title here. They are leading 10-5 in the second map, first half here against Liquid, who got just completely dismantled on train. Moses, that American spirit, <laughs> can, it, can it make its way back into the grand finals here? I, I, what they really need to do is, even if they start out well, we've seen it, this half alone, this first half, two Antaika losses. Now, one of them, admittedly, is down to some amazing shots from Fallen with that scout. But still, you can't be losing these rounds in this grand final. You can't be giving things up. This is stop momentum. The third round they lost, they go in another two-round losing streak. Once they get things going, and they lose another one. And they keep shooting themselves in the foot. It happened on train, it's happened now here. And this is a massive hole to dig themselves out of. For a team that struggled with pistol rounds, they need this one. No doubt about it. And what I'm wondering right now is, we learn now that we've watched the fur video that you know SK Gaming they live in that house and it, and it looks fantastic, right? But they might need to actually redecorate the living room and they need feathers, right, to stuff into the pillows. So this freedom bird right now is just getting plucked <laughs> and more feathers. I don't know if Liquid have any more left to give. SK Gaming are looking fantastic and they're showing no fear whatsoever. They go charging out onto the B side and this time it's fur. Double entry kill for him. Well, Nitro and Elise are actually fighting back right now, and this is their last chance to make a stand. They must make this work. Elise is gonna go down, but he did take two with him. The bomb is by Chicken Coop. No one's picked it up yet. Cold gets a kill, and now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Nitro has got the double kill, and FNX hasn't touched anyone yet, and the bomb is not down. Nitro has time to work with. He's gonna push in. He does spot out FNX. He has confirmation. He knows where it is. It's USP versus Glock. He's now back by Chicken Coop. He needs to find that bomb. And right now, Nitro, very, very patient. He's not even worried that FNX is sneaking around the other side. Think about how difficult it is to play this. He's looking for the shot. He does a little bit of damage and knows now that FNX is in the back line. He's going to smoke up on the left-hand side. And now FNX is going to go for the mind games. Rotates around. Nitro reads it, but he's still very low on health. Around the smoke, it's going to happen. And FNX will take him out. Oh, no. Nitro actually played that so well. But it wasn't enough. That smoke uh, that he threw seems to mess. Uh, it seemed like it backfired a little bit. I'm not sure what his thought process was with it, but it actually seemed to help FNX more than it more than it hindered him. I saw you shake your head when he uh, when he actually put that down. There is that little bit of hesitation that comes out. When you're on a one on one, you better you better be very confident in pulling a grenade out at any point to begin with. But even that smoke, it's, it's what is it doing? It's actually providing cover if FNX wants to have another avenue to to make uh, to do to do some kind of movement to make some kind of play. Well, another clutch goes SK Gaming's way, another pistol. Team Liquid continue to struggle with the pistol rounds and it's definitely gonna hurt them here, 11 to five. And they're still on pistols, Liquid trying to save up money for the rifles that SK Gaming, well, actually SK Gaming are pretty, they're going a bit French style here, G2. Four SMGs, okay then. But it seems like this is, um, Working out. Well, it's working out. Perhaps a read. They're just, they're just realizing, well, Liquid might not buy Kevlar in this second round, and so we'll look to make some money. The goal the goal for Team Liquid, Andrews, you'll love this. They bought three nades, which I know you're a big fan of. They were trying to go for some kind of nade sack, hoping that there would be someone from SK, maybe one, two players coming towards this beep option, so they could just drop three nades at once into the choke point. Obviously, it doesn't work out that way, much like Elige did. The SMGs for SK were just set forward on scouting missions, and they found a completely wide open A bomb site. Yeah, I definitely think it's 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 worth the idea, I mean, especially if you're this far behind. You know, what a round if you picked up three kills with grenades. But um, that obviously did not happen. Kalabu's there as Taco takes out Nitro, and a bit of a battle that really takes you back. That has got to be one of the most epic battles in Counter-Strike history, actually, <laughs> in the Tower of Kabul. Yeah, except if you were on a public server and you needed to find that last person hiding up there. <laughs> Never a good time. JDM is also taken out. Not that I think it really matters here. I mean, it's nice if Liquid saves some pistols, but that's not gonna, what really sort of going to change this map, is it? They need something bigger than that. I, I guess if we really want to get nitpicky, the one thing that irks me is that FNX is the one running off with the rifle, the only rifle that you have, you know, and he's running alone while the rest of you guys move around in a murder troop with a bunch of valueless SMGs, right? So, I mean, I know, I know it's a bit of a stretch, but FNX. <laughs> Keep the rifle with the teammates. That is the one thing that Liquid would love to pick up is the rifle for this round here. Again, on pistols. Again, saving money for the next round. And this time around, they will be stacking on B, it looks like. Liquid, four players here. Simple, the only one towards A to hold towards underpass. Taco, FNX, and Cold Zero waiting to say hello to him. 
if they can if they can punish fur, they'll be able to rotate around the map. They just have to be very careful how they handle this aggression down drop. Because actually, it's he's still pressuring it, but he's being a little bit more passive. Fallen's going to drop back. He's going to meet up with his teammates out towards the A site. And Liquid do seem to have a read on this. They have three players over towards A. They have a fourth on the way there. Although, meanwhile, they've largely ignored Fur, who they know is at the top of drop. Got to be careful about that, ignoring Fur. You never know what might happen. Even if they manage to sort of slow the initial attack in here if it comes to A, which it seems like it won't even do, but even if it did, you know, Fur could still be the guy walking in behind them from drop. So, Elish is in a good position. Tragically for him, they have Molotovs, and if Taco throws his into the corner, Elish is going to have a very um, tragic and hot end to the round. Follow and find simple, fairly easy kill there. A little bit of additional money, and this is all about drawing attention towards that A site. Little does he know, practically everybody is already here for Liquid. Three players stacked on the site, ready to hold, and SK Gaming, they're actually gonna rotate the bomb back into the stack. It couldn't be better here for Liquid. Yeah, but if you have four members of that A bomb site, how is simple just playing so isolated and alone? No one there to back him up. It's bait. It's bait. If it is bait, at least, they are getting very really close to taking it right now. Fallen charging in, they need a quick kill here, and. Very full on the pick of that one. Finally, Nitro in the corner, isolated, alone, and they're coming for him with knife. Oh, and he gets one in return. Nitro takes down Taco, and now the Molotovs are finally gonna burn him alive. And that's up to Elish. Six seconds here. The bomb plant. Is it gonna happen? Oh, what? No, the fire! Oh, it's still gonna happen. Fur taking out Elish. That would have been the round. One more second. How can it be real? You, you can't script this. <laughs> what is going on? I don't even know what to say. That is total chaos. Taco, you go for the night. Are you mad? I think you would have been mad if you lost that round. Uh, I mean, that, that's just such heartbreak. Again, another clutch situation. Comes down to that last second and nothing goes Liquid way. SK, this is just putting on a clinic on Liquid's best map. Uh, well, Taco is going to, yeah, basically probably calm down just a little bit after that. Bit of a hairy situation there. Definitely a little scary. Uh, SK Gaming setting up for a quick take. Fallen straight down into the drop. He just charges into Hiko. Looks like he ran into a brick wall, though. Hiko just shuts him down. And so now, SK Gaming down a man and still looking for a way out onto this site. JDM and Elise with their eyes on Plateau. And Taco thinking about trying to work his way through this smoke. Gets one of the smokes down of his own. And maybe he might be able to abuse that. But that incendiary, it's not getting canceled. And he's waiting and he's going to get caught by Elise. Very good use of grenades here. Has given them a one man lead. And rotation happening, and look at Nitro, he's sneaking in from behind, he really needs to stop running. At this point, you've already done so much for your team, don't give it away by being too loud. Elish is right by the broken wall, and he's got people there in a very good crossfire indeed. 50 seconds on the clock, and Elish gonna try and fall back, and now SK gonna make their move. On to the bomb side they go. 50 seconds here as Elish picks up a good shot there. Fur gonna be going down FNX as well, and Cold Sierra last to fall. Simple. Picking up a double kill, and that will be 13 to 6. There's the start, and they have four players survive. Nitro picks up an AWP. They can pass that over towards JDM. So they have everything in this round they could want to start a winning streak, to start trying to claw back into this game. Really nicely done to get some early kills, and then just fall away, be passive, force SK to commit to the bomb site, not give them any easy kills. But now again, here's the next, here's the next struggle. This is where the thought's going to be in the back of their mind. Another anti-eco coming out. I, feel, I love this, though, from SK Gaming, man. They know that they have so much time, so many rounds to work with here, that all they have to do is bide their time. They go for a half buy in this round, so they'll be able to go for a full buy with rifles and everything in the next round. So they do not want to give Liquid any room to work with here. They're going to maintain some pressure with the Tech Nines, and a very quick play, it looks like, out onto that B site. They aren't wasting much time here, SK Gaming. Already the nades for this execute are out. And now Hiko, round two, and Taco's taking point this time. Right on the other side, a lot of people coming in and straight to the face. Hiko is going to be out of the round now. Four versus five is simple. Now it's going to kill in return, but they're getting overrun. These close positions are dangerous versus the Tech Nine. JDM in the back line here, nice flick on the Taco. It's a two on two. He's bringing it back for his team, and there's still no bomb plan. Nitro is right behind. JDM just has to stay alive. Doesn't have to do anything else. They're coming for him, though. He's got the pistol out there, running him down, and just teamwork coming out right now from SK. And a headshot. Oh, no! Oh, that's the third kill in the round. My God, SK two rounds away from winning the grand finals. That was a drive-by. It looked like an afterthought. You didn't even see Fur turn. The, I mean, the presence though from Fur to just to know that the flank is the next logical place for any kind of aggression it took so long for that flank to come into play. 
That's it. You just have to take a breath after a round like that. How many of these rounds are we going to have? Another anti-eco failure for Liquid. SK Gaming coming through on pistols. And now, I mean, it's just Liquid. They, what can they hope to do here? They have two rifles, they have the shotgun and two pistols. This is all they could buy with their limited economy. SK Gaming, however, running with the double AWP. They have all the fancy toys. So now we get to see them put, to, well, put them to use. Elish playing a very dangerous game right now against Corsera. And I wish he would stop because I feel like it isn't worth it, Elish. He's still young, got a lot to live for. Just <laughs> keep away from Cold Sierra. Cold Silla, that is. Especially the way things have gone for Team Liquid, you just know that a shot like that from Cold is it just landing through that smoke at some point. Yeah. But now, I mean, look at the nades left on, on the Team Liquid side. There's not a lot left. Oh, so this is interesting. Did Hiko just get boosted up and drop? I think Elise just went over there to boost Hiko up, so he might have an option here, but Fur is checking it. Very thorough play coming in here from Fur. Not sure if he heard any noise to, to, to alert him to the play, the trap that had been set by Liquid. But still, 50 seconds left on this clock. SK Gaming continue to run this clock down, and it looks like we're going to be heading over towards that A site. Fallen rotating in now with the bomb, and Nitro and Simple already set up solid on the site itself. With oh, the, re the remainder of their team are actually pretty far away, so this could get very tricky here for Team Liquid. Nitro and Simple have to hit some shots and stay alive for Elise to start rotating over. Nitro is playing very close, but he's going to be in so much trouble. They're coming up the ramp as well. He's going to go proactive instead. That makes a lot of sense. Simple now alone on the side. Backup is coming, and Taco being caught in an uncomfortable position ends up going down. Fur ready and waiting, and no kind of backup possible here. Hiko going to fall as well. It is match and map and tournament point here for SK. There were, there were really no, no options for Liquid in that round. No tools that they had. SK has just defeated them soundly, taken everything from them. This is just brutal, because when you're watching the minimap from SK Gaming, they just swarm the site. It's just, there's nowhere to hide if you're Liquid. You're constantly caught in crossfires, they're constantly getting in your face, they just don't give you any room to breathe whatsoever. And so, given the situation, it just can't happen like this for Liquid. They're on pistols this round, guys, and it's tournament point for SK. It's so mad to watch, and you guys get a real good sense of it here. The round is going to be live, and we're into the 22nd one. It's, um, it's hard to imagine that SK won't be able to do it. Well, look, we would be looking for nine straight rounds in a row here for Liquid to try and bring it back. Don't want to say it's impossible, but it seems increasingly unlikely here. Here's that challenge again on the Cold Zero. Is he actually going to go for it? There's no smoke there this time. He has the scout. He wanted to go for something, but Fallen did it better. Well, yet another terrific start here for SK Gaming. He goes on 5 HP, they have the man advantage, they still have all the firepower and fall, and they just can't get anything going. An underpass against him, he's always one step ahead. Yet another pick, JDM's been spotted by Fur as well. And Hiko is working his way towards connector. Fur hears those steps, so they have all the information now, SK Gaming, to make the play happen. Three more kills, even with this big of a lead, even with so much going their way, they're still playing it slow. No one is rushing anywhere, no one's leaving anything to chance. JDM going down, Hiko going down, and now Nitro alone, one versus five, with a pistol being flanked as well. SK Gaming, what an incredible team. It's up to Nitro. He does get a shot and picks up an AK, but there's no saving it. He has to go and fight, and they're getting close. Here's the spray coming through. He takes out Fur as well, but he's down to 12 health. And now it's just all in the details. Easy for SK to pick it up here. He's trying to walk through the smoke, but it's just not going to happen. SK Gaming, second major championship in a row. They are your winners. Now this is this is the best team in the world. They've proven it over two tournaments. They've proven it over a span of months. The way they play the game is just so hard to go up against. I don't know what you would need to be able to defeat them. They're just so powerful. 
absolutely incredible performance here. There is no weakness in their lineup, and now... All right, Fallen, let's, uh, let's try and get a few words right now while you're celebrating. Great victory, fantastically powerful all the way through the tournament. Not really any flaws in your game at all. There are a few mistakes in the semi-finals you said you wanted to work on, but is this the perfect team right now in Counter-Strike? Yeah, I think we've, we've found the perfect team. We have been trying for so long. I personally have been trying since 2009, seven years trying to achieve tournaments, and I have the perfect guys on my side. I mean, everyone from all of them played so well. Uh, on the first map, me and Fur personally didn't have a good map, but it's about a teamwork. It doesn't matter if you're a good individual, you need to fit in your team. And I think everyone here is perfect for what I need. In terms of winning a second consecutive major, can you just put that into words, what that means to achieve? It's such an incredible feat. This is more than expected, be honest. We just get outside Brazil, get outside our families, we get outside our house to try to do something. But I think we're doing more than something. We're building a legacy and that's, that's a dream for us. That's everything we dream of. Yeah, let's talk about that legacy a little bit because this, this actually could be the SK gaming era. We've had one before in 1.6, but we've never seen anything quite so dominant as this right now, except for maybe Fnatic. Yeah, I think th that's true. We will keep working to win more tournaments. I think it's our seventh final this year, which is a lot, uh, very impressive already. But we need to keep working. Uh, we, we will not slow down as we did after the last major. Uh, we will now have a good break because we are out of the tournaments that is going to um, we're just going to go back for CS in August now, so we're going to have time to go back for our families, stay a little of time in Brazil, and then we're going to come back again with our full force for next tournament. All right, best start. Ladies and gentlemen, the ESL1 Cologne Major Champions, SK Gaming! Six days ago, we started with 16 teams. We now crown the Brazilian side SK as the kings of Counter-Strike, the best Counter-Strike team in the world. The SK era is officially here. Gentlemen, the Brazilians now dominate the Counter-Strike scene. Duncan. I mean, you can't argue with back-to-back -back majors. And what's more, this one they won here, there's none of those asterisks or the excuses, of, oh, Olaf Meister was injured, Guardian had the, the sensitivity issue in the final. No, this time you went against the best teams, you won, you won comprehensively over the whole tournament. You have the best team in the world, probably the best in-game leader, the best AWPA, maybe the best overall player. I mean, the, the level of superlatives you can go with these guys, you could, you could spend 20 minutes just saying how good they are. Definitely. I, I think they're the, the, the most well-rounded team at the moment. They've shown, uh, even when they're not playing at their best, that they can pull through. But this grand final was just a clinic for them. You see it time and time again. Players performing individually, getting multi-kills in rounds. And when, when they're playing at this level, I think that there's not another team in the world that can stop them. We saw how much it means to them, Blue. So much emotion on that side, and I have no doubt there's so much emotion on that stage right now. Yeah, absolutely, and considering that this is now a second repeat victory, and I mean, in my opinion, these past like three or four months of Counter-Strike have been some of the most competitive we have had in such a long time. So many top teams. We basically have a new team taking a different tournament every single weekend at this point. G2 has been stepping up. A lot of the other big guys, and this this event just what in itself has had to have had some of the largest amount of upsets within a single event. 
I think for, for this team in particular, it's not just, you know, they've been asking them a year from now, a year before you just came in, moved to North America and everything. I think that's the, the main thing about this team. It's not the destination, it's, it's not where they are now, it's how they got to here, right? They gave up a lot. They really did uh, make a huge effort to try and make it into Tier 1 competitive Counter-Strike, moved, moved away from, from their home, basically. And I think that's what makes them such an amazing team, right? That's what gives them, you know, that's how they're able to make those crazy moves. When, when you think they're down and out, they step up yet again and they manage to come back. The, the, the sheer amount of determination, grit, mental fortitude they have, I think that's because of the way they got to where they are now. Yeah, one factor that I think is always a key quality of like a true champion is not the idea that you win because it was, it was your best day, you know, the opponent was playing badly, you caught a bit of luck here and there, you know, you went way above your normal level. The true champion is the guy where he can play seven out of 10 on his level and he can make that enough to win no matter what. And he can play against an opponent like Virtus Pro, be in all kinds of trouble, be down a map, all these bad situations, and somehow he always manages a way to grind out, go through, and then, we can have performances like this where everything does come together and then you see like the full capability of a team like this. Champions have made sacrifices and they have earned their spot at the top of Counter-Strike. And just a moment of reflection, of course, of the North Americans. You can see Simple there, his last performance alongside close friend Hiko. The North Americans did so well to get to this point, Yanko. So, such a, an admirable performance from Team Liquid to see them in the grand final, just a moment to close out this fantastic event. Definitely. I had high hopes for them coming into this tournament because seeing them in ECS, I saw more than I expected, given how little time they had to prepare. And that was also the tournament where, where Simple was the worst performer, which is something that, you know, is a one-off. You're not going to see that happen again. So I was confident they were going to show up in good form, but the, you know, the, 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 how deep they went on in the tournament, I couldn't have expected that. And the fashion in which they beat some of the teams, you talk about Fana uh, the game against Fnatic, losing all pistols, managing to come back, 13-11 down on both maps. I think they, they really showed what uh, a team is capable of when they have uh, trust in each other. And we can see the route that Liquid took to this grand final, the route that SK took. This top eight was stacked. Such a true performance from SK, besting a very scary Virtus Plow. And then, of course, Liquid not only dominating the boys from Navi, but also battling through Fnatic, two teams no strangers to major finals themselves. And Liquid get to their first, the first North American presence in a major grand final. South America wins this one. SK are your ESL1. CSGO, the ninth CSGO major champions. It is done and dusted. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. It's been a great pleasure sharing this desk with you for the past six days. Everyone behind the scenes, of course, internally grateful to see just how beautiful we got to enjoy this event. We say goodbye now before I do go. There is, of course, a way to understand how this did go down. The SCORE eSports application, it gets you all of the information you need on this event. If you have missed it, you know where the VODs are, youtube.com slash ESLCS. We get to see another ESL1, ESL1 New York. We'll be heading to the Big Apple, and it will most definitely be a rosy affair. Counter-Strike's coming to New York, and you get to see it IEM Oakland as well a little later down the line. You will even see the champions, SK Gaming, they will be there in Oakland. We'll get to see what the Brazilians are capable of. As they said, they'll be taking a little break, hanging with their family who was present here to watch them be crowned the kings of Counter-Strike. Thank you so much for six days of fantastic gaming. And now we say goodbye. We'll see you next time. <laughs>